Caca! Caca! That's a calling signal, my friends. You know what it's calling in? It's calling in both the new year and the new season. The brand new, the reboot, new the season? soft reboot of uh of the new the, in the Fine Looking Brothers cinematic universe. We have the two Fine Looking Brothers podcast, <gasps> baby. New season, new year, gonna be a good one. <laughs> are you are you even prepared for the magnitude of what we are going to do? <laughs> Don't touch my hairs. Your hair was on the mic. It doesn't matter. Um, I'm not prepared for the magnitude because you know why? Why? We did this last year and we're going to do it again. This is a 2017 year in review. We're going to talk about the best of the year, the worst what, of the year, what, media, I, memories, fun times, over year overall. I have a question. Uh, what episode was that? What number? Stop putting your stuff on the table. Please. No idea. I can't, I, I can't tell you what time the episode was. Uh, it was probably like 30 something, right? Was it? I don't know. We got to 40. We got okay. to 40, right? No. 40? 20. Wait. How what, How many happened? episodes of the... I'll look it up while you talk. Mm-hmm. Season's off to a great start. Whatever. We're on season two now. It's going to be great. Uh, it's the end of the year. We're ringing in the new year with uh, t- tales, regales of memories and blemishes and, blemishes memories. and anishes and degenerate uh blemishes there's 40 episodes of the two fine looking brothers mm-hmm. podcast this is episode right. 41 slash season two episode one uh let's get right into it so how did 2017 start off well i think before we jump in we should talk about overall 2017 as a year okay because so where would you would you say 2017 is the best year you ever had um honestly like you don't have to be a say yes or no no definitely not i would definitely not say it was my best okay year. not at all zero uh i mean i had some good times i had some bad times but the, the goods were good mm-hmm. the bads were bad uh yeah it was it was a weird year i caught in like this weird uh position where 2016 may forward is the best year of my life but January through April that year, I was really I was in a really bad depression and it was horrible. So, if you like, if you count May and forward, does that count as a year? Like May, March, April, May. May that's like, forward that's is like, like two thirds of a year. Yeah, like May forward, twenty sixteen, best year of my life. But if I had to do a full year, I'd say this best year of my life. But I've been also having a lot of existential issues that started at the beginning of the year and I still are still going strong to this day. Like this is the this really hardcore like existentialism like where i'm reevaluating my life and like you know what i mean like you you same thing with you yeah you've talked about it before and it started at the very beginning of this year january 1st we watched moana <laughs> was that january 1st yeah oh that really set the tone i didn't even realize mm-hmm. was that was that like that was we must have talked about that on a podcast then but yeah it set the tone for the entire year right the entire year has been shaped by the tone from that movie oh no (laughs) to give you to give you context for this for this movie um this this is a children's this is a a movie you've all seen this is a a movie for children go watch that's on netflix i was in tears like 10 minutes into the movie not not supposed to be like a sad if you want to learn like more about this go read i wrote I wrote why Moana, how Moana messed me up. Mm-hmm. It's a post on my website, joshuaclafter.com. Plugging it. Going to be a lot more active in the new year. joshuaclafter.com. Go read how Moana messed me up. It explains this entire thing. Uh, I have no New Year's promises. No New Year's resolutions. Zero. I have uh, zero. Stay alive. I'm going to, I will be alive. My New Year's resolution, submit my book, one of my mm-hmm. books, to publishers this year. Uh, oh, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, there's a great, a great uh, post I'm gonna find. But yeah, so how did that set the mood for you? I'm interested. But, well, this is the year. This was my last year as a student. Oh yeah. I graduated from college a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> These were my last two semesters, my senior year, and I think this entire year, while great, 
has been filled with an entire reevaluation of my life and my place and everything. And just this 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 feeling of like dread inside like knowing that I, like i have a passion that, that doesn't match with a career can you put on the fan please it's really hot <laughs> uh, it's gonna come up so la- uh, oh you don't have to you don't yeah, have to yeah, we, yeah. we could be we could sweat a little we could sweat a little get the uh get the bad bad air out of the now nah, fuck, fuck the podcast viewers okay like, two, no, no. Uh, two of you out there there's two me of us listening uh future josh you don't you don't matter compared to present josh <laughs> yeah so it's just been, I have a clear thing, and I can't do it full-time. I know I'm going to have to live at home. I'm starting the new year. I'm living at home at my parents' house, starting now. I mean, I may move. There's also a sense of optimism that I think is going into the new year, is that now that I'm graduated from college, it's a pro and a con. My life isn't on a cycle anymore. There's just the infinite future. If that makes the sense. Infinite future. You know, like college, it's like you, you, your life is broken up into semesters. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you have like a fragmented life, like a segmented life. That's yeah, the I know. Word. I know exactly what you mean. I'm going. I don't that. have that anymore. I have the infinite future. Mm-hmm. I just have until I die ahead of me. I found. I found. Uh, I found the post. By the way. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't know if this is how you feel. It's by the share. The share zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, it says fucked up in 2017. 2018 will be my year. Probably still be alive in 2019 to just in case. 2020 will kick ass. I don't get it. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. It's fine. This will be the, that'll be the picture for this okay. podcast. I'm gonna send it to you. Uh, okay. I, I I will make sure. This. <laughs> so, um, what was I saying? Yeah, but like my life now is no longer segmented. It's just. The rest of my life until I die is just one chunk, oh, if that makes sense. Oh, no. And it's this infinite chasm. And it's a pro. There's pros and cons well, to it. Well, until your midlife crisis. Well, I've, I've hit my midlife crisis. So you're going to die at 40. No, no. I've hit a young life crisis. And the rabbi on my fucking Poland trip was saying, he's like, don't have a midlife crisis. Have a 20-something crisis where you reevaluate you your life. I and I'm like, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm in my midlife crisis You remember right when now. I had my midlife crisis last year? Mm-hmm. In like late 2016, that I was, had it. That uh, was a fun time. I had it. Uh, not going to talk about this that entire here. That year. Was been my midlife crisis, and it's still kind of going. I think once I get used to living at home, it will be ba- It will be gone. Uh, but yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be weird. I'll have if I'm since I'm not in school and I'm working, I'll have in a way more time to work on content. Because I have no friends down here. They're all at school. And I, I won't have anyone to hang out with. So whenever I'm not at work, I'm just going to be working on stuff. You know what I mean? I'm just going to be working on videos, working on blog posts, working on my books. Like, there's going to be nothing stopping me from working on stuff. So, like, at least early 27... 27- <laughs> what are you doing? I don't know. <laughs> this is what I do when I podcast. Okay. So, yeah, because it's weird. We don't actually look at each other when we podcast. Yeah. Like now we're, like, just looking directly at each other. <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's int- intimate moments. Um, anyway. Now that I have long hair, it just kind of gets everywhere. Yeah, it's a mess. It is a mess. Okay, so... We got this, like... But, yeah, so it's a pro and a con. Um, who knows where life will take me? I, I said... This is how I explained it. And it is not meant... I'm talking about this in a positive way. I'm going to wing life. I'm winging life. I have no plan. I have nowhere... No goal. Well, obviously the goal is to become a successful author. That's end goal. But like... For now, I'm just winging life. I... I'm going to find an interesting job, whether it's in New York, whether it's in Florida. Who knows where I'll move? Who knows where I'll be in a year from now? Who knows where I will be New Year's this time next year? No, no. I could be here. Could be in New York. No idea. And... It's scary as fuck, but it's also kind of cool, if that makes sense. Yeah, I I agree to some extent. I sort of have the opposite problem of you, where I have, right? You have a passion, and with you have a passion with no career. Mm-hmm. Uh, I found that I have ended up in a career with no passion, mm-hmm. and uh, it's very. It's gotten to a point where it's uh, it's been very hard to continue with zero passion you see getting just getting through it is really tough and then once i graduate it's gonna be like well can't do this 
I'm, I refuse. I'm gonna. I would rather work. Rather work at McDonald's. I'd rather work at Target. Career with no passion to me is better than passion with no career, and here's why. You can always find you will you will find your passion at some point. You will. It just happens. Everyone has one. You know what I mean? You're gonna find it at some point. But you have the career. You have that. You're right. I guess Do you know what I mean? Like you have the background. I don't have the thing I need. I have the passion. So I'm we're both screwed in a different way. Yeah. But yours will develop eventually. Like is video making your passion? I I don't know, maybe. If if you have to say I don't know, maybe then it's not. It's, you know what I mean? Yeah, this is like no, a psychology. <laughs> this is a psychology not. lesson. You're lying down in the chair. Yeah, the, I'm okay. like I'm like up. I got my legs raised. I got all blood flowing to my head. So I'm like uh, I'm I'm like in my. Is that why they lie you down so the blood flows to your head? I have no idea. <laughs> that would make that sort of makes sense, right? I think it's just because it's like the it's power dynamic. Is it? Is it like because someone's when you're lying down you feel more powerless compared to the guy that's like sitting upright? Wow, that's some Freud. That's, that's I, I'm, I'm sh- I feel like Freud's the kind of guy who would make that up, that make that dynamic up. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he came up with like the entirety of psychology, right? He created the human brain. Yeah, <laughs> he had 300 IQ. That's how he came up with the brain. Probably watched Rick and Morty. Yeah, I think he he understood Rick and Morty. He was the only. He was the first person to. He discovered Rick and Morty. It came from an alien broadcast, and he decoded it. He mapped it into... So how was this year, Zach, overall? It was it was pretty good. <laughs> Rick and Morty Season 3 came out. It fucking sucked. <laughs> so, like... It's garbage. I think we could go into some shows that happened this year. Like, um, I mean, we got Rick and Morty Season 3. I watched two shows this year. I watched I watched Ruby, which is not over yet, and I watched Rick and Morty. And well, no, no. Think about it. The second half of Volume 4 was this year. Oh, it was? Yeah. All right, beginning Volume of this year. 4 was uh, pretty good. This year great. is so weird to me. Because it feels like a month, but it also feels like the longest. Do you remember when ever. I did when we went when I went to SwampCon and did that like Love Live panel? Yeah, and was there doing the challenges? That was a whole year ago. That is that's crazy weird. to me. I feel like I was just there. Like, SuperCon, this this past SuperCon, where we did like chess friends and everything. That was half a year ago. That seems see SuperCon seems so recent. It seems like a month ago. Yeah. Everything this year in my head feels like a month ago. But it it's also, so weird. Everything, like, time has kind of been messed up for me really bad. Me too. Because I feel like I feel like we were just... I remember we were just recording this podcast. Yeah. We were just doing it does this. Not it does like that long. It is a whole year. It's a whole year. <laughs> Where did the time go? Like... 2017 was like a year on Fast Forward. It just went by. Like, it wasn't a real year to me. I had two arm retrieval concepts. Hey, hey, then. hey. 2016 ended, oh, Trump's going to destroy the world. Well, guess what? We're still fucking here. Shut the fuck up. No more talking about... The, no, no more politics. More, no more politics. Ever. Delete Go them. to the shut up and fuck off party. I'm wearing my shut up and fuck off shirt right now. It's just... That's that's just... It's just disgusting. People need to shut up. People need... I'm getting so mad about it. You go on Twitter, it's like... This is, I can't believe our president... Blah, blah, blah. I think we're, we're, we're almost perpetuating it by talking about it on the podcast right now, but how annoying it is. We're also talking about politics <laughs> when we should not be talking about our no. opinions on politics. We should be talking. We should not be talking about it. Be keeping it to ourselves, which is exactly what I do. I never talk about it on Twitter, no matter how much it bugs me. Hey, and it doesn't. It doesn't bug me who it's for. It just bugs me that people are talking. So, about what it. are some of your most positive memories of this year? What oh, are some of the best things that happened? So this year? much good music came out. It's so much great stuff. I like started learning Japanese this year. I each ni san, san she. That's what you start off learning Japanese with, obviously. Like I, uh, I had my favorite like. Okay, so essentially my life got taken over by school work this year because I got uh, considerably dumber this year, and I've not been, true, but okay. I, I've been unable to like uh, maintain a work life balance. It's just been all work, no life, because uh, and I almost fail everything I do. So I <laughs> so that happened. But I, I actually took a course that I pretty much enjoyed, which is like a theater class, and I met some great people there. 
for like the first time in my life took a class that I actually enjoyed. That was a good time. No, your cranberry juice. Shouts uh, out to cranberry juice. It's so shouts good. Shouts out to cranberry juice. <laughs> You're out there. I don't know. Um, but yeah, did like I'm gonna create a New Year's resolution for you. Do it. I will. So, I think you just need to like 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 just you know Gavin's Sorry. just stop being sick thing. Yeah. You just need to be like. Just stop being resilient to work. Just stop. I you just need to do it. I, I wish it was that easy, Joshua. Joshua. But it is. I did it. You think I like like in ninth grade, I was fucking up my entire thing. I just didn't do anything. I was resilient to it and everything. And then like the rest of high school was easy, so I can't really but like I got to college and there's so much shit that I didn't want to do that was terrible. You, and I just said I have to do it. You don't understand the difference between like uh, like what is it like? I don't know how to say it, but like English work, like essay writing and code writing. Writing. It's huh. Writing. Yeah, writing and code writing, is like writing. Writing. You write something and you have a product. Code writing. If you don't write it correctly, you have nothing. You have something that doesn't yeah. function. You get a and zero. As someone that doesn't do computer science, I will never be able to fully understand that. Like it's like the like worst. I get it, but I'll never be able to mentally grasp. It. You know what I mean? Like like. Because I'm so used to writing, like, the lowest I can get on anything that I write is a 50. Let's yeah. be real. Like, like I can't I could, get lower than a 50. 50 is I turned in something. You know what I mean? There have been there have been assignments that I did in this class, and I, I worked on them for, <laughs> like, 30 hours in a week, and then turned them in, get a 20. That's... That's disgusting. Because I didn't get anything. Working. Not just dis- you're not you're disgusting. The I whole know. thing is disgusting. Yeah, that's I'm, that's just how code works. You don't and understand it, how it works. You don't get it working. You get the twenty percent. But it's like, I read an article, doesn't get. I put in a shit ton of work, doesn't get run. I got a fifty. At least I got the fifty. You know what I mean? Like a code, like I put in thirty hours you, to an article. You, you have a finished product, right? Yes. Like you you can code something for like triple the length of that time and have nothing. And have yeah. something that doesn't work. Something you can have something that's working the whole time, and then it breaks at the end. And then I just get happen. mad when you talk about code. I, <laughs> I just get angry because I'm I, like, because I know how hard you work. Like I know you're not lying to me. Like I know you work that much, and oh it's just such God. bullshit. I hate computers so much. I so I wish I did anything but computer so science. So why don't every you switch your life. major? I don't have money. I don't have the money to pay for another degree like zach you're paying for college anyway why not just do pay for another set of classes like that's i don't have the money to pay for like you said you have two years left of computer science right i have one year left i don't have the money so if to you pay switch for... major now you'll have at most two i'd years. have to do probably five years more you would not have to do five years more there's no way i'd have to because you have all gen eds done and i had all gen eds done when i was going into uf and it took two years Okay, I have to do. I might have to transfer schools, go to like a cheaper school, but then again, I don't. I also don't like have a passion for so, anything. Okay, so you're at you're at Northeastern right now, doing something you hate. Yes. So literally anything would be better. Think yes. about it. Even like like anything you'd like more. So just pick something you like even slightly more. Like, is there anything? There has to be no something one, you tolerate no le- no more than any. No one has ever suggested anything that is like slightly more tolerable, other than video editing, which is like not a good degree. But like you're you're like not going to use your computer science. What do you get? Okay, what kind of job do you want when you graduate? Retail. Really, I I don't want to touch a computer. I don't want to code. I, Would I you mean, do freelance video editing? Sure. Okay, so why don't you switch to, like, a film major or something? Or, like, do telecom. Because I'm, like, I'm like a year from graduating, and it's just okay. not worth the money. I started at UF. I was took two and a half years to finish, because I came with all gen eds. Your gen eds are done, so you have that, too. They're not done. You haven't finished gen eds? Not yet. For the most part, you finished gen eds, though. Mostly. Yeah, so I came into UF most gen eds done i had to do a couple like two or three and i was able to graduate in 
Two years, two and a half because I did a semester in D.C. that didn't count to anything. So two years. So if you switch majors now, it's not going to take you more than two, two and a half years at most, which comparatively to things isn't that as much more. So I think this is obviously isn't the point of the podcast. We're going off on a tangent, but, but you know I mean, this, this is been, more. This, this has been a good, major. This, this a is major a major part of the year. Yeah. Life. Yeah. This is a major part. Both of us like stuff like this has been yeah. a major issue of the year. And that's why I like the bad parts of the year are like represented in this 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 style of existentialism. This is exactly what the bad part of my year is. Yeah, this is me too. Like 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 literally, but yeah. So so why don't you just switch to like telecom or something and just do two more years, and you can even go to a different school. I'd also have to do another. So my school requires that I do a like an internship. So I also have to do a semester of. I'd have to do a semester prep for that. Uh, like so why don't you just colleges. go to a different school? I would have to go to a different school. Why don't you just finish at FAU? It's going to be much cheaper. You're it's right not here. not that much cheaper, and I'd have to move all the way back here, and I hate it here, and... But you hate it... You like Boston, but you hate the school, right? Yeah. Not the major. I mean, that's what I mean, like the classes... I don't know. I mean, there's no, there's no right or wrong answer to any of this issue. That's the problem with the issue. It's that there's no like, like same with my issue too. Like, there's no answer you can give that's just a clear cut resolution. It's just anything we talk about is just suggestions. It's not like there's no right or wrong way to do it. Mm-hmm. So it's not. There's really going to be no conclusion to this discussion. Yeah. And uh, but yeah, I've had this discussion a lot. But there you really know what? There's no solution. Maybe we should get more optimistic. Maybe we should talk about some good stuff that happened this year because a lot. Like, the existentialism and all that stuff was definitely the bad part of the year. And it was just this... I, I wouldn't necessarily say that. I'd say I had a lot of good... Uh, I No, I had a lot of good memories, too, this year. But, like, it was something that was there I all of, year. I had a lot of good existentialism this year. Me, too. And I'll get to that. Yeah, I agree. But, yeah, like, there was always this this bad existential, like, the stuff that we're talking about, like, my uncertainty in years ago. That was always eating away in the background of everything. And it was always there all year. And I think it's still there right now. And it's going to go into 27... Until I get settled in life. Because like, right now I'm still looking for jobs and everything and I'm home. Once I get settled into something, I'll be fine. But like... Yeah, it was there the whole year. And I think that's what really caused the negative and the worry and everything. And the lying awake at night and things like that. This is the psychology cast. Number one psychology cast on YouTube. This is what happens when you reflect on an entire year. It just gets very But you know abstract. what? I think we should just go to positives because there's no point in Dilly Dong. This is here. It's here to stay I, for okay, a while. Okay, so what I so let's define positives. Positives are not necessarily happy. Something valuable. Valuable. Yeah, like, That's the I have, I have positives it. that are sort of sad. They're like bittersweet. Expl- give an example. Let's huh? start with that. Like let's I've, start with I've, that. Stuff. I listen to like a lot of a lot of sad music. A lot That's of, a positive. A lot of sad me. stuff that made me sad, but ultimately feel better. Mm-hmm. Like it was, it was a good experience because it made me feel sad. Like, uh, uh, I, you haven't, you haven't seen it yet, but stay on. It's like one of my new favorite songs. Is that the new Kagura Bajic song? No, no, it's the new Endless Jess song. It. Uh, oh, I haven't heard it yet. Yeah, it's it's one of my new favorite songs uh, because it. It made me feel really bad, and that was kind of a continuation from last year's crystal ball epidemic. To me, we talked about that last year. Did we? I think so. I we, we talked about did. crystal ball in the podcast. I'm sure. To me, though, a piece of media giving you that kind of emotion is a positive. Yeah, there. it's definitely it's a, a positive. positive yeah, which is why I wanted to I wanted to like make that clear. Mm-hmm. Something making you feel sad is good. Can be good. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, I think perfect example of that is how I ended my year. I went to uh, went to Poland and I went on a. Uh, I, I when I describe it to people, I explain it like a Holocaust studies trip. I guess is the best way to describe it. It's we go around Poland and go to like different. We go to all the concentration camps and the ghettos and everything, and it's a jewish group and we go around and i don't know i think it was it was very emotional it was very rough like it was very difficult to get through and it was very tough 
but I think it was one of the most worthwhile and memorable experiences, not just this year, but like my entire life. Like I'll always remember some of the things I did in Poland. And like, even if I don't keep in touch with them, I'll always remember a lot of the people that were there just because of how much you bond with people in like emotional situations. You know what I mean? So it's like, probably we'll never see the vast majority of these people again, but I'll always remember them because of the trip and I'll always remember the trip. And I think that was the perfect way to end this year for me at least. And it also helped me reconnect with the, with my, my Judaism a little bit, my, my, my Judaism. And I don't know. I feel like I'm a little more optimistic going into 2018 because I'm going into 2018 a little more religious and I'm going to see where it takes me. Who knows if it will stick, but, uh, I, I, I think it's, uh, I think it's giving me a little more optimism going into the new year. I know you're completely anti-religion, but, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to, this is the positivity segment. I don't really want to get Bash me. Go for it. Into that. I fucking hate religion. It, uh, tears apart families and uh people hate gay people because of it that's the only reason um, Israel. <laughs> is there is there any other reason um, because... Israel. Um, Israel. Um, Israel. <laughs> just chanting chanting israeli lyrics <laughs> Okay. It's not dance the okay, whole to me, around facts. It's not the religion itself that harms people. It is the people abusing the religion and using it to make it's not agendas. it's not abusing when it says it in the text. Like you're not there there is no abuse there. That's You think if you went to Habad, you think my Habad rabbis hate gay people. No, but you're you're following a text that was written like thousands of years ago as if it was the word of God, as if it was the word of a deity when it's so clearly just when it's so clearly like just this bullshit. Well, a lot of the modern stuff we follow in Judaism doesn't come from the Torah, it comes from the Talmud, which is a bunch of rabbis wrote it. Yeah, in like the Middle Ages. Yeah, based off of this based off of the ridiculous Torah. like just book of rules for these people thousands of years ago that includes like dietary restrictions based on parasites that were found in animals that is no longer a threat, right? Shellfish and pork used to have this really horrible mm-hmm. parasite that would uh that would what would it cause? I don't remember, like dysentery. Or something, and it would now cause we know disease. That, huh? In general, it would, it would, it would be unhealthy. There, there's, it would a specific, harm there's a specific disease, disease that the parasite yeah. would cause, and we know how to prepare the meat now. And yeah, it was, like it was pork's those, not going to kill you. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like very clear why those rules are in place, and, and people are just people just say, oh well, you know, it was, oh, it was written by God. I and mean, I was born into the two percent of the world that you know that observes this, so I think I was right. You know, I'm just. My parents were my parents were uh, raised in this, so I believe that I'm right, and I'm gonna dedicate my entire life to this, and just hope that when I die, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not just gonna act like a good person. I'm gonna dedicate my life to this religion, hope that I'm right. What? You know, like, not ninety eight percent of the world is probably wrong. You know, all those, all those, is all those people who follow Islam, they're probably wrong. All the Christians, not, they're wrong. not what I said, but okay. <laughs> uh, no, but like by by following by following it, you are inherently saying that the other people are wrong. Not true. Yeah, to me, is. for me personally, it's not true. To me, if you are a good person, you are a good person. Doesn't it doesn't matter what religion you are. Doesn't matter what you do. Doesn't matter how much you practice Judaism or anything. To me. Practicing, and this isn't to everyone. To this me, is the worst positivity segment that we've ever done. No, you know what? You know it's good. It's good. We're having a good discussion. All right, it's because we're getting sure. everything out in the first uh, podcast of the thing. Yeah. Anyway, but to me, it's not a be- like it's it's about if you are a good person, and to me, practicing Judaism is just something I do to connect more to God and feel more connected. And it has ne- to me whether I practice Judaism doesn't affect my stance. In life or in the afterlife or anything. To me, if you're a good person, no matter what you practice, no matter what you do, if you're a good person, you're you're good. To me, 
my practicing of Judaism just gives me a little bit more of that connection. It's not what the determinant of whether a person's but good or bad. But it doesn't that like that doesn't matter to to observe a religion. You have to uh, you have to assume that everyone else is wrong. You have to assume that your religion is correct, which implies that everyone else is incorrect. There is no. No, you you can't. There hold, is no guarantee that anything, sp- anything spiritual that isn't factual. There's no guarantee. That there's no factual proof for. There's no guarantee that's real, regardless of what religion you are. There's absolutely no guarantee. But I've seen enough in my life, and I've seen enough, like stories, and heard enough things to feel like God is real but to me personally. Now I, like you can, people can think that a deity is real. And I totally understand that. What I don't understand is being born, seeing your parents follow a religion, meeting people of every religion on the planet, and seeing like them also doing that same thing and going and you see you see people from all over the world doing the exact same thing and you go I think mine are right. All right, I'm in. I'm this tiny, tiny sliver of the population, and I think I am correct. So I'm gonna dedicate my entire life. I'm gonna impose dietary restrictions. I'm gonna spend a day of the week doing like, like doing these arbitrary rules that people have set up over thousands of years, because for the sole reason that I was born this way, right? You didn't ask to be born to your parents. You just were. Mm-hmm. You just sort of ended up here by chance. You could have you could have ended up in any religion, and you just decide that this is this one's right. I don't know if Judaism is right. I I don't know. So you're gonna I have no you're guarantee. Gonna spend, you're gonna spend your entire life hinging on this thing that so few people on earth believe, and if it's wrong, then you're fucked. Right? If I'm not fucked though. No, That's no. The if point. it's if it's Islam, and the God hates Jewish people, you're fucked. You're going to hell. If it's <laughs> if it's Christianity, oh. you're probably okay. I I don't. Think uh, if you, it's if I don't, it's like, uh, I don't know if I'm not just not explaining myself well or no. But like, think about yeah, it. Yeah, think like, about it. There are how many people are Muslim in the world? Like fifty percent or something. Right. Fifty percent of the world. I don't. I don't know if that's true. It's probably like thirty percent. But like mm-hmm. that percent of people. Like more more people than anyone, I believe, are Muslim mm-hmm. or are, are celebrate the religion of Islam. More than likely, they are correct, right? There are so many more of them than Jews, so why wouldn't they be? Cor- why, like, why would Jews be correct in Islam? Wouldn't, Judea- and they say, kill everyone who isn't Muslim. Judaism, right? Christianity. And Islam it's all, all believe same, in the same God. All the same God. And it's not like, oh, we just believe in the same God, the concept of God. No, we believe in the same yeah, God. Yeah, they believe in the in same God. In their religion, God. the Jews worship the same God. In the, the Christianity, the Jews worship the same, I mean, everyone worships the same God. Yeah, it's they not believe in the same God, but they also the have it's another the book. Same. They also have another book that is another prophet that comes down and says that anyone who celebrates another religion is going to hell. Right, if you if you celebrate another religion and they're right, you're going to hell. It's, okay, you're, okay, you're taking, okay. You're taking the worst debt. Out we of need all. to stop. We need to stop. <laughs> okay, because there is literally there is no way to come. The religion is such a complicated topic. There is no way to come to a conclusion. There on is it. there is no but there is no logical conclusion in which in which anyone would in which like. In which anyone should follow a religion that has uh, so few people in the world other than just, like, other than just, like, ethnically. I don't know why you would do all the, like, weird dietary restrictions and daily restrictions. Obviously, the the community stuff is, like, great, totally fine. But the, like, weird self-imposed restrictions that clearly had a purpose... Uh, in the time that they were written and don't anymore why what's the point you like like i guess the best way to say it is it just it makes like as a person and this is not just applying to me this is the like like deep down psychologically it makes you feel good like like 200 percent honest like 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 psychologically 
following something like like it like psychologically makes you feel good it makes you feel like you're doing something good you're following makes you feel like you're doing the right thing you know what i mean it's like but you're following something that is even if it's even if it's not real even if it's not true even if it doesn't apply you follow these things that are established in your code of ethics or whatever and it makes you feel good for doing that yeah you're following a book that says stone to death gay people that says in like in practice separates men and women while praying Yes. Right? Have you seen have you Judaism. seen the video? Have you seen the airplane video where the where the uh the Hasidic guys try to like put up stuff <laughs> over like stuff? Like this I is have. this is still happening. But the, there's extremists in everything. There's extremism of in course, everything. Of course, but You think I'm gonna go and do that? No. And I'm I, I consider myself semi religious. You no, know what but I mean? I've, I've seen I've seen it sort of like absorb part of my family and it's it's really fucked up and it's sort of like torn us apart. Like I've kind of lost a third of my i don't like think you have though cousins. i think you're just thinking that way you know what i mean i mean you think if you went to your you think if you went to your cousins and were like hey let's hang out you think they wouldn't uh i mean if it, i mean if it wasn't shabbat like if you just went on like a weekday like they were both weren't doing anything i mean you said, hey let's since, spend time together they would since do they it. have become religious i have not talked to them like at all i mean in in years to me it's all about the person it's all about how the person handles their religion it's I, not about it's not about there's no right or wrong way it's how a person handles their religion if someone there could be an orthodox rabbi there could be a reformed non-religious person they could be on equal standing in my opinion like anyway of, this isn't of, this is number one religion cast of course. on course uh, <laughs> like that's that's obvious and that's true of anything but i don't know why following that would make you feel good why something that like something that tears families apart something that encourages it, like it segregation of sex the, the the religion doesn't tear families apart it's how people use the religion how people practice the religion it's people people tear people apart yeah not I, the religion it's, it's practicing the religion that does it the, but they're not doing it in the right way in the right way they're doing it by the book okay which is exactly if someone if someone if to, someone goes and stones a gay person to death because of their religion you think god's gonna be happy with that no well okay He's first not. off first off it says to do that in the torah for one so if you're following it by the book just like just like the whole shabbat thing is do you mix the, fabrics that's the you're not allowed to mix fabrics yeah, you're not in allowed the to torah. mix fabrics you're not allowed to shave the corners of your some beard. things just don't apply you're supposed some to things put, just don't make sense you're supposed anymore. to put things on the corners of your garments which we don't have corners on our garments anymore it's people still wear People still wear... But that's that's exactly what Shabbat is. Shabbat doesn't say anything about electronics. They didn't exist. It just says don't light fires, right? The whole don't use electronics is just like a like wide interpretation yes, of this. Yes, but it thing. also... Th- think about it. It's a day to disconnect from the world and just relax and take it in. Think about the appeal. Of, like Think about the appeal of it. You're just disconnecting from everything, any stressors or anything. You're just simply relaxing and just enjoying that? life spending time with your family enjoying reading a book whatever you want to do like just yeah. it gives you a nice relax just gives you a nice spiritual disconnect you know what i mean do it's that on n- your own don't do that for like but if some... my religion just happens to have something that does that why wouldn't i take it because your religion is like horrible <laughs> oh my god this okay this this is just gonna be a loop i'm because sorry because we sorry, both have different... judaism no, is judaism is ruined it's my not... life and it has not ruined it. your life but okay i <laughs> i'm sorry it i was i was raised in it and i hated how did judaism ruin your life it huh? did it <laughs> I've, I've lost relatives to it you have I, info i have i don't i like, can't talk to them anymore okay they don't they this don't is, like this me. is a this is a Pointless. This is the number one positivity cast. We're talking about the good stuff of the, the life. Year. Okay. This is the good stuff about. Well, okay. To be fair, uh, in 2017, uh, I've had no religion. Zero. It's been great. Okay. Yeah. I. Okay. So Josh has been in touch with his religion, and it's been great for him. Yeah. So everyone, what they enjoy, everyone we've, can. We've both been. We've both been having the time of our lives. To each we his own. We went to Chabad together 
twice, right? Yes. And it was a great time for... Yeah. Wait, was that... We're both in 2017? No, you went last year. Only. Okay, so we went once in 2017. It was a great time. Yeah. Everyone has their own things that they enjoy, they connect with, and to each their own. Whoever, Whatever makes you happy, makes you happy. If it's religion, great. If it's not religion, fine. It's completely... Like, whatever makes you happy. And that's the point. That's the point. It's not about... It's not about who's right, who's wrong. It's whatever makes you happy. And... To me off of that, a lot of stuff has made me happy this year. Um, I mean, we had a couple, a couple great cons this year. Supercon. We had Supercon. SwampCon was pretty great. Didn't go was, to that. was there yeah. any other cons this year? Uh, I went to PAX. You weren't there. I wasn't there. Um, but yeah, like this was a great, great year. I mean, other than the existentialism and stuff, we had a lot of great albums. This year was an amazing year for music. Oh my god. Even today was a good day for music. We have fucking... Think about what's come out this year. We have uh, three Digi albums. We have uh, Above the Earth Haunted was the beginning of this year. Yeah, right at the beginning. We have Emotional Anime Raps, and we have Gay and Dead. And then, like, Gay and the Dead, Digi's best album. The beginning part of, um, what's it called? Uh, the new one. The new EP started coming out. Uh, I forget what it's called. I don't know. Something low. What's that? Manic low. Manic low's new EP started coming out. Oh, I haven't heard it, but yeah. But uh, you have that. You have new fucking. I think I think it's a new EP. New fucking audio album. Wesley Dreamers. Wesley Dreamers so was good. this year. Uh, his new album stuff started coming out. Listen to a bunch of it. It's really good. Yeah, I like waiting until the full album's out and then just listening to like. Well, you don't even have access to it, so whatever. Shut the fuck up. Shut <laughs> up. You can't. You can't even listen to it if you wanted to. Anyway, <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, you don't want to. So you can't. You can't yeah. even. You would. You wouldn't even want to even if you had. History access of Out of to. Service. Was the, I discovered Out of Service this year. Uh, really? Like I've been talking about him forever. Early January this year is when you got me into Out of Service. And, and they're the it. greatest they're band great. ever. Not greatest band ever, but I love them. And uh, yeah, so so much. I I like started getting. I there was like an out of service like hashtag sort of thing, and I like started talking to the Japanese out of service fans, and it sort of started getting me interested in learning Japanese, and then it ended up me taking Japanese. And now I know a bit of Japanese. Is it time to get into it? I think one of the most defining things of this year for me. Sure. Um, and I think it changed, like, like honestly, it sounds, like, a little weird, but it did change my life, and it did change my perspective on life and, like, my, like, way I look at things and how I act, is uh, in January of this year, beginning of the year, I started uh, reading and I started getting into Andres Thompson. That was this year. That that is that's huge. Yeah. Yeah. That's, like, of course. he's probably one of, if not my favorite, like creative inspirations. Writing, lifestyle, everything. I mean, not obviously the full lifestyle with the drugs and everything like that, and alcohol and everything. Like, but honestly, <laughs> just not. the way that would be horrible. Hunter S. Thompson looks at the world and the way he writes and the way he, the whole Gonzo journalism thing is like I consider myself to be a Gonzo journalist. I consider, like, my writing on my blog, my vlog... The, I consider the vlog to be a Gonzo Journalism project. I wholeheartedly believe that yeah, is the it case. Yeah, it has it gotten is Gonzo, to that point. It is a Gonzo Journalism project, so... And just the way I look at everything... Like, obviously, I'm a, primarily a fiction writer, but, like, on my Twitter, it's, like, fiction writer and Gonzo journalist. That's what I am. And before this year, I was not that. I wasn't a part of my life. And now I've discovered it. I read, like, Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas in, like, January. And, uh... Ever since then, I've watched all the videos, watched a bunch of documentaries, read, read a bunch of his work, and it's like, yeah, I've become a gonzo journalist, and I started like being really inspired by Hunter Thompson. I created the care, the persona of Hunter that I cosplayed at a Supercon. Whoa. Whoa. We also created like a million personas for you. We created a couple of like vlog and movies. The entirety of vlog yeah. lore. Vlog this lore year. came this year, like 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 Lynn and shit like that didn't exist that's, before that that came out like halfway through this year but um i mean i mean obviously it existed forever hey 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 zach yeah it existed since like the 1700s yeah it's since 1792 the columbus i mean Lynn, uh, Lynn the Lynn establishment the ocean blue. establishing Lynn was over half a year ago 
<laughs> that's insane to me. Time doesn't work anymore. Time, time, yeah, it doesn't pass by. It's Those... like, like that, like this. <laughs> so, um, yeah, like, like, I think that's one of the biggest parts of the year is just this, like, getting into Hunter and all his work and everything and be- becoming not more like him, but, like, more inspired by him and looking at life differently. And I feel like there was, like, a couple of junctions that made me look at life and the world differently. And I, I explained, like, I was explaining this to someone else. Shoe end junctions. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, I'd say big one was Mega... As the hat... Just says, Mega 64 was one of the big things that allowed me to look at life differently and look at my perspective, like, on how I live life differently. And I think Hunter's Thompson was another one of those junctions, and it really changed my perspective on things. And for a positive way, I'd say. And, uh... Yeah, that was this year, and it was great. It's crazy to me, like, that you just weren't, you weren't, like, a Hunter fan at all. I wasn't not a Hunter well, fan. You, I just decided to, like, you, get it's into It's become, him. like, a defining thing in your personality. Yeah. Since then. Uh, I did real cosplay, really, for the first time this year. I did a Hunter at a... I did Hunter and I did uh, Sun Wukong. Sun Wukong is probably the best thing you've ever done. Do you done. know who I am? I am Sun Wukong, you Yellow little bitch. bitch. You little pansy ass motherfucker. I can't believe I almost forgot about this. What? The Professor, the of, professor Thrones? of Thrones. Yeah, I made what can be perceived as my main channel this year. <laughs> you have um, not uploaded to it in months. Yes, I'm going to do um, an update video like where I have been like cool. pretty soon. But, like, and I'm going to get real back into full things. Because I've been working on a big project for it. I'll, I'll get that soon. Whoa. But, yeah, I created the Professor of Thrones. I, I just had an idea. I was writing, like, Game of Thrones shit on my blog all the time. And I was, like, talking about Game of Thrones so much. And I was just like, why don't I just fucking... Cause yeah, okay, okay, don't leave me out of the story. You were, you were big in on it. I was bitching at you for, like, years to, like, please make make this into a video. Yeah, like, like yeah. And then, like, I was just, like, thinking about, like, like the whole gimmick came from the idea that like i was like i will edit this my video grandparents for you just if you make it my grandparents watch the show but they just don't understand a lot of the nuance and it. and it's such a nuanced and deep series and i'm like i gotta convey this to people and i i jumped in and sure enough it it was semi-success semi-success you like, had one video that has like i had one video that views. exploded and because of it i got a pretty sturdy subscriber base and that was when I tried diving how into many, how many subscribers? Yeah, seven hundred and something. Yeah, which is which is how good. much money have you made Not from great. that video? Made like four hundred and something dollars. Oh, that's like more than I've made from yeah. YouTube probably. So and I have like I think 8, the beginning of my downfall is when I went over my head and I started making Ruby videos too, and I think I'm going to address this issue. I think I'm gonna put Ruby on the back burner for now just make just like focus on making more yeah. of those viral hits i like, just think i'm gonna go into game of thrones more in depth game of thrones explains gonna have a lot more videos i'm working on a big game of thrones explain project on the white walkers and the great other find your right gimmick now. it's Joshua. working right now and i think i'm working that's in production right now and it is it's i'm not lying it is whoa your arm's super veiny what like put it out like this again like face me yeah, it's like super veiny. I'm like I'm I'm like cutting off circulation by Fuck. sitting like this. But yeah, so <laughs> I go subscribe to Professor of Thrones if you haven't already. I'm obviously subscribed to not the Professor. You, of, I was the you. first subscriber to the yeah, Professor of Thrones. Little bitch, little bit, yo bitch. But yeah, like like I'm gonna put Ruby on the back burner, and I think I'm just gonna go into the year, focusing on one thing: Game of Thrones, A Song of Ice and Fire. And yeah, and uh, vlog. Second half of vlog season three, and then vlog season four was this year. Um, not proud of the what, like there was some great stuff. Like we made a couple of solid like movie, like mo like I started vlog anthologies this year, which like essentially are mini movies. I did the Swamp Con one, and then we did Super Con the movie three, and we did um, Fear and Loathing on Black Friday. I'm so, I'm like. N not super happy with the amount of i was okay so i was really sick for a lot of this year mm -hmm. but so i'm not super happy with the amount of stuff i put out but the quality of stuff that i put out yeah i'm very happy with i put out some really great stuff this year put out super con the movie three put out fear and loathing on black friday put out homestuck 2 i leaked it i put out um I, I just like a bunch of like so such weird stuff 
that uh, I put out so much weird stuff, all of which I'm very happy with. Yeah, uh, no, this... a, a lot less, a lot less formulaic stuff, uh, and but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get back to my series and do some less formulaic stuff with him soon. That's a good idea. I'm looking forward to it. Like, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I just, I've just been waiting on stuff and like filling in with weird things, which has been yeah. fun, but it's kind of not. <laughs> it's been weird. Your YouTube channel is, like, it's completely biased, this opinion, but it's genuinely my favorite YouTube channel. Thank you. In the way that whenever I see it uploaded on you, it makes me more excited than if anyone else uploaded it, because I know you so well. You know what I mean? You're, so I look you're forward probably to your the only the person who gets, like, all my... I get, you have to explain some stuff to me, but for the most part, I get your humor and everything. But, like, yeah, like, because I know you so well, like, I, I would say I'm your biggest fan, because your YouTube channel... I don't even follow Steven Gunner anymore, or any of that stuff. Like half the stuff I don't even get, but it's still my favorite YouTube channel. I'm just gonna for... have a crazy like Steven Gunner explained. The next the next one's gonna be like out of this world because it's just I'm gonna really looking forward it's, to it's it. It's just gonna be a vlog, it, like disguise. It's just gonna be like a vlog disguised as Steven mm-hmm. Gunner explained. It's gonna start off like a normal one, and it's gonna break down. I'm gonna like <laughs> I'm gonna like break down the wall into a vlog. Like, ah! It's a vlog. <laughs> the, the fucking dark night of dark deeds. <laughs> but yeah, like me, me like running into the panel. Like, <laughs> are you on the panel? No, but I'm, okay. I'm gonna. Everyone I'm gonna knows see, who you are that watches Civic. I'm here. going. I'm going to see how much stuff I can crash. Like that's my goal is to crash everything <laughs> because everyone knows who I am, but I've not been formally invited to anything. So, I'm going to meet as many people as I can on day one and be like, hey, like, can I come sit up on the panel? <laughs> I, I mean, I'm friends with, like, pretty much everyone. You made one of the most, po- was that this year? Yeah. You made one of the most popular rips. <laughs> yeah, 200,000 views. Club Penguin. That's kind of ridiculous. I made one of a the piece, most popular like rips A creative this year. project that you made, 200,000 people have watched. Yeah, that's crazy. Although, like... Yeah, me and Chase made something something that has made probably thousands of people cry. That's crazy. <laughs> that is absurd. And has become like one of the staple like ending like one of the staple like send offs of Club Penguin, mm-hmm. apparently. In like the style of a two thousand six music video. It's amazing. It's well, it's genuinely so amazing. When I made that I legitimately thought, like, as I was wrapping up production, I know you were you were talking to me, like, on Discord, I think, for, like, most of the recording. I don't know if you remember this, but I'm, like, I was I was ending recording, I'm, like, I'm, like, I don't know if, it, like, I'm gonna send this in, and this is gonna get uploaded. I think I'm the only person who's gonna enjoy this. Like, I, I don't think anyone is you gonna get that. this. You said that, you did. Yeah. I, it was, everyone enjoyed it. Everyone loved it. Every single person liked it. I was, I was so blown away. I, I couldn't believe anyone else liked it but me. <laughs> it was so weird. Now I'm trying to get something else published, and it's it's an endeavor. I can I can show it to you if you really want. I don't know if they're even going to publish it. <coughs> I, can't, I can't get a response. I'm going to bug a million people at MAGFest. I'm going to be like, hey, look at my rep, you motherfucker. Oh, pansy ass. I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna steal someone's phone and publish it. <laughs> <I'm mobile. laughs> yeah, you... I'm not actually gonna do that. If you're listening, uh, definitely not gonna do that. Don't guard your pockets. Hide your kids. Don't Hide your wife. <laughs> the bed intruder. It's clobbered in your windows. He's snatching your people up. Back to the vlog. I'd say this was the worst year. Ever for vlog content, <laughs> best year by ever that, for vlog lore. By that, by that you mean main season. Okay, like movies were fantastic okay. this year. We but got super calling, con- calling the vlog the worst season, the worst year ever. Probably implies that it's the best because the vlog being bad is good. No, I mean I'm very disappointed with what I did with the vlog this year, and here's gonna be why. Like the movies were great and everything, and the anthologies were great, but overall. Season 3 did not end with anything climatic. It ended with me giving up and taking a break, which was fine. That's It's completely fine. 
And then I said, I'm going to go full force with season four daily again. And I just didn't jump into it right. Like, I didn't commit to it. And it didn't come out the way I intended. I mean, it's not all released, obviously, yet. But, like, I just it just kind of died out. The flame died out. And I just eventually, I said, I'm going to end it with graduation. And I did. But it's just... It's just that it, it's it was so disappointing. It's just It was hard. It's, my life isn't conducive for a daily vlog anymore. We were in high school doing the same thing every day. Yeah, it's it's weird that like we were, the vlog sucked in high school, and we were. Constantly... It was terrible, but it was daily. We yeah. did it. Like now, it's just life is. It, the vlogs are getting better, but life isn't conducive as conducive yeah. for a daily vlog anymore. I think I think your idea for season five is really Don't good. Don't tell, tell it because I'm not going to say. I'm not going to say. But I think that's the plan for season yeah. five. I would also like to help, even though I'm remote. So. Maybe like maybe this. like I'll upload stuff mm -hmm. to it and like anything I'll do you want to put on my channel, just upload it and I'll. I'll All right, I'm gonna do. It. I'm yeah, gonna start like, doing that. Like my channel, like I I, I say it. Beer Josh Ryan Forty Five is the vlog channel. So if you have anything you want to put, it's like it's like Rocco V Sixty Four. It's that's the, the yeah yeah that's Mega Six the Mega Sixty Four channel is Rocco V Sixty Four. But yeah, like like any for the vlog lore, vlog continuum, whatever you want to do. Just put it on there. All right, I'm going to, yeah, I'm just going to start like, publishing things on there. Honestly, like, but yeah, so I'm really, like, I, I think this year was a little lackluster for the vlog itself, other than Supercon the Movie 3 and Fear and Loathing on Black Friday, which are masterpieces. Thank you. But. I've edited both of those. Yes. No, what about, what about Bread Tricks? Bread Tricks is a 10 out of 10. No, wait, there are some gems in these vlogs, yeah, obviously. All, there all are three of the ones stuff. where I was at Gainesville are amazing. Yeah, those are great vlogs. But except think, for except for you can skip this one that one sucks but you, i think overall is uh like i'm i was disappointed with how i did the vlog this year but going into 2018 2018 is gonna be better i'm really still looking will forward probably to... be alive in 2019 2020 is gonna rock <laughs> no that's, I'm really that's why that picture is the... on screen right now i'm really looking forward to where the vlog is gonna go in uh 27 2018 and uh yeah before the end of this year before the end of 2018 or next the upcoming year, we will have not only finished Ruby Volume Five, we will have half of Ruby Volume Six. What? What? What is Volume Six even gonna be? Like, I think they're gonna do. I know this is the number one Ruby cast. I think they're gonna do. But hey, we'll find looking hey, brothers be back. I'm gonna announce something now that I'm not gonna be covering Ruby on Professor of Thrones. Think of one of my favorite series that we've done is gonna come back and i think we'll we'll come back this volume like we'll come back old friends. we'll come back this volume i i think we're gonna continue i think we're gonna start next episode oh my god two fine looking brothers. i'm announcing it right now two what? fine looking brothers talk ruby this is new to coming me coming back i just thought of it right now on the I'm, spot. I'm one of the fine looking brothers and i didn't even know this yeah so i'm so fine looking <laughs> one of my beautiful. favorite one of my favorite series i've ever done and uh, you know what else i'm bringing back it was a canceled series that was crap in the grave that didn't work out. I'm bringing back Joshi, Joshi does, does anime. anime. Yes, I'm if, so excited. Okay, essentially the goal is now going to be because I can't do it for shows I watch regularly because I like to binge shows. So it's going to be for shows that are coming out in the season. If I watch them, gonna do gonna do it. Josh does anime is back, baby. Um, the Rick and Morty series fucking sucked. It's canceled. Uh, oh, <laughs> too fine looking brother to watch Rick. Well, the show just got bad. Like it. Okay. We we should I watch talk about it. This. We should watch it and just trash it. Like, I feel like this season <laughs> we say it get bad, but half the fan base got really bad. We but, should we should. But half the episodes this season were very good. I'm I'm okay. Uh, I'm taking control of it. It's back on. Oh, okay. <laughs> talk about it. I'm gonna go to the bathroom. And talk about your plans for it. I I don't want to spoil it. Okay. Well, uh, talk about. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about my new series. Um. So I've been talking about this for a while, but I started a new series. It's not on video yet, but you can catch a sneak peek of it in my Discord server, which you can find on my Twitter by searching uh, from 123ZC1 Discord. I have a music, it's called Music Club, uh, that's not going to be the YouTube name, where I post a song a day and like a blog post about just something about the song, whether it's the, the video, the meaning of the lyrics, the thing just something i like about the song something i dislike about the song i don't just i just post something along with it and it's like uh it doesn't really have a a, a goal it's just one a day and i think at some point it'll become a video series but this is like a, a dry run to see if i can do it in text 
And eventually I'm going to start like doing it like a let's play of an album. Uh, where I start an album one day and then go through all the tracks uh, like one day at a time. And we like listen to it together. You know, like a short... A short, like, I like, like minute-long video a day. Why should Let's Plays be limited to games? It's it's like a Let's Listen. It's called Music Club in my in my mm-hmm. Discord. I'll, I'll show them to you after. I'm working on... I'm prototyping a series for music, for albums, and I'm not fully ready to announce it yet because I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it, but expect some sort of music series coming from me, too, this year. I don't know how it's going to come out, and... But uh, yeah, expect something like that. I I just wrote my favorite uh, my favorite one yet. I wrote it on. Uh, I'm listening. Don't worry. I wrote it on Noriaki Unstoppable. You know that song? No. Do I know it? You probably I don't know. know. Can Can I read it out? Because I just I just want to sell read you. It. I just want to sell you on this series because uh, it's 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 one of my favorite series. Absolutely good. I feel bad posting this so early into the series because it may be the greatest thing ever created. If shirtless Japanese man smoking two cigarettes remotely interests you, please watch this. If it doesn't, is this the guy who was rapping in Japanese? Yeah, Yeah, I've seen. Watch it anyway. Unstoppable was Noriaki's rap debut, and it was really his breakout hit. It's about ten years old now, but it still holds up as if it were created just yesterday. It doesn't have any English subtitles, but I don't think you even need them to understand what's happening. Uh, his actions tell all. Here's a list of things that he does in this video that you should be familiar with. He raps quietly in a Japanese family restaurant, think like a Denny's. He claims Eminem and Zebra, who is a famous Japanese rapper, are fakes and that he is real. He compliments his own flow. He smokes two cigarettes under a bridge as cyclists go by. He rolls around shirtless in the snow. He angrily raps about smoking causing low birth defects. He begs the listener to fuck him because he's a virgin. He breaks into a passionate (laughs) dance while in some sort of port in public while still shirtless. And of course, the only logical conclusion is that Noriaki was then flown out to multiple locations in Japan to perform the song live for money. I now appreciate it. I now appreciate it. Like, I did You're appreciate welcome. it when I watched it. Anyway, that's 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 just a flavor uh, text of of the, the amazing content that you could see. I've written a bunch of these. Uh, they're all, like, they're all that good. I have one more thing. Before we, like, sort of get into, like, the cool things, I have one more thing I want to promote in the upcoming new year. I mean, I don't know if any content for it will come out this year. There's no guarantees. But uh, me and Jordy, has Jordy ever been on the podcast? I don't think no. so. But yeah, so me and Jordy, we should get her on. We started a show, and I don't uh... mean YouTube show. Like it is a YouTube show, but I mean like an actual legitimate like fiction work show, and uh, it's called the Vineyard. If you are interested, not Vineyard. you don't have to be interested in Vine. Vineyard. No, the Vineyard. <laughs> Vine line. Line, my mind, mine. Vine. So um, yeah, we created a. Pilot slash, it's slash. a in, it's a standalone short film that is the pilot that also serves as like a, an alternate version of the first episode of the show because we're still gonna do the first episode but it's it's the first episode of the show as a standalone short film and we released it with the Kickstarter campaign for our show so go check it out it's the Vineyard I'll, I shared it on social media so many times I'll probably share it so Vineyard. many times more shut the fuck up <laughs> shut up anyway. But yeah, if you're interested in, it's it's a comedy drama series of sorts. Um, trying to think of what I can compare it to tonally, not hundred percent sure. I'd say it's somewhere between uh, Mad Max and Game of Thrones. <laughs> oh, that's a hundred percent true. Anyway, <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome for the comparison. Just put me on the box set. About a college student. Just, I just want some college royalties guy, college for the club. club gets social media fame overnight and how he handles it. If that sounds interesting to you at all, go check it out. That's uh, exactly our story, by the way. This podcast just got famous. Thank yeah. you so much, all you viewers. I love yeah. you. I love so, you so much. So if you're interested in that stuff, if you're interested in social media, like if you're interested in, in like just 
anything just go watch it it's uh the pilot's up go join it to our uh gofundme uh not kickstarter i don't know why i said kickstarter gofundme um fund us go fund us go fund me um yeah even any little bit counts so if you like donate a dollar that's even anything like any little bit counts so if you're hesitant no matter what you have just just donate it um share it around a bunch more times but yeah um really looking forward to it because there's a chance we'll start production on the official season this year i mean i can't guarantee anything i don't like to guarantee anything because we're still waiting we need more a little bit more funding and we need to do like secondary auditions and stuff like that but yeah i'm working on a real show and I think that's a, that's really weird <laughs> to say that. I would like to talk about a project that I worked on. Mm-hmm. Probably the greatest thing I've ever done and will ever do. I'm listening now, right? And will never top. Uh, I worked on something called Arm Retrieval Con 2K17. Zach is now a member of Munchie's <laughs> Inner Circle. Just, just go watch it. If you haven't seen it, it's probably the most... It's arm retrieval lore and vlog lore. So if you want the full vlog lore, it's in the vlog stuff and materials playlist. Go watch it. It's by far the craziest day of my life. It's absurd. Uh, and it ends with this two-hour-long virtual panel. At one point, you, just, you said something that reminded me. Like At one point, I was over the side of the couch like laughing so hard. I couldn't, <laughs> I, I, like, I couldn't contain myself. I had, to, I had to like lean off screen and start laughing. Because Munch is doing some some bit. I don't want to spoil it, but there, there's a point where I like I lean off screen because I was laughing way too hard. Amazing. It was it's so I will I would never do something as funny as Arm Retrieval Con ever again. Go check it out. It's all on Munchie's channel. There's three videos. It's all in the vlog supplementary materials playlist. So yes, if you're if you're looking for. Right. It's also all in the playlist of everything I've done. Do you have a playlist of everything you've done? I started working on it. I should do that too. It's a lot of work. There's a lot of stuff that I've done. Because, I, yeah, like, I've said, like, do I put Jewish Kirby in there? Do yeah. I mean? <laughs> okay, actually, my stuff is not as segmented as yours is. Yours is probably all I over. lost the vast majority of the content I made. Yeah, you deleted I had a YouTube so channel throughout your... most of middle school. I had over 350 videos on that. Imagine if we could go back and watch those videos. Imagine Why? how great it would be. There's a that? treasure trove, and they're gone. You should find your flip video camera. I I have it. Doesn't work. There's so there was an entire SuperCon 2012. The entire vlog for SuperCon 2012 before the vlog was even a That's thing. That's like is vlog on there. archives. But um, I think the most interesting thing is what it was on one of my computers is my last day of middle school vlog that I did before I knew what vlogs were. It was just I called it a documentary, and uh, that's accurate. We had a friend, like, oh, I had a friend. I don't keep in touch with him anymore, but he was, he had the, our sense of humor before we knew what it was. He watched Mega64 back then and everything like that. Like, he had our sense of humor before we knew what our sense of humor was. He kept on taking my flip and, like, trying to put it in the sink, getting it out of my <laughs> hands and everything, running around the classroom with it. And I'm like, he got it before he, we got it. You know what I mean? Like, we what didn't a understand. What a genius. He was, he was way ahead of his time. <laughs> but yeah, like, I wish I could find that. That's stuck on my computer. But, Enough dilly darling, because I do gotta go soon. But like, yeah. what do you think? What should we like? Like, I'm trying to see. Is there like, did, I I know we're forgetting a bunch of stuff that happened this year, but it's like, this was. Uh, would this you was say it was good. a good year? It was yeah, it was pretty good. I'd say it had a balance, but it was a good year. And as pessimist as like scary as everything is coming up, I'm also looking forward to it. Yes, yeah, I'm looking forward accurate. to the abyss. I'm made in the abyss, baby. I gotta I... watch that show. <laughs> yeah, I probably should watch that show. <laughs> I am looking forward to 2018. Any good media coming out this year? This year? Next year? 2018, yeah. Uh, Macaca City, uh, what's it called? Uh, oh, the movie, right? In a, oh, In A Day's releasing 2018. The new album probably coming out 2018. Uh-huh. Uh, probably new out of service album, maybe. Definitely new, new, probably new Digi Lore album. New Digi, uh, probably new EP, maybe new album. Big well maybe well laid and well paid. That's what I'm looking forward to. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Plebe and the Weeb will probably wrap up, hopefully. <laughs> I'm behind on Plebe and the Weeb, I gotta catch up. Oh, you loser. <laughs> Three episodes behind. Oh my god. You missed, you, you haven't even watched the best episode yet. Anyway. 
Anything else before we uh, jump into the new year, new season of Fine Like a Brother? Is oh, shit. Like that? Oh, man, it's coming up now. Oh, oh, and just, oh, I didn't even, it's coming up right up on. Oh, right shit, yeah, it. it's like 11.59. Oh, my God. Oh, man. I we gotta, we gotta do it this. so late. Uh, uh, oh, man, fuck. When's, uh, where's the countdown? Uh, 10, 9, 9 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Happy New Year! Whoa! First person to uh, fuck up the mic in 2017. No! Don't do that! No! I'm the uh, first. I'm the first person to uh, Shut it dance off. the jig. I gotta resume your hands Oh yeah, I graduated college this year. That happened. I never oh fuck that. That's <laughs>